What up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with some more Vinland Saga. Today we're doing Season 2, Episodes 7 and 8. Remember, if you guys want the full, uncut, unedited version, as well as early access to the other shows I'm watching, check out that Patreon. Links are down below, like always. Please leave a like on this video and let me know your thoughts in that comment section. Let's not waste any more time. Hop right into today's episodes. Let's do it. Arnhade. I wonder if it's Arnhade. I've been saying Arnhide the whole time. Probably sound like an idiot. Aww. That's nice. I don't know. Something tells me that Arn Arnheed Arnhide ain't or this something's not gonna work out there. Way too happy in the show, you know. <laughs> That's how guys are whenever a girl you like compliments you at all. Damn. From the thing. I love how they call it the thing, just like in Vikings. Uppsala? Which, also, I don't know if you guys care at all, because I, I very rarely, this is just a little fun fact about me, just thought about this because they said the thing. I very rarely find time to watch shows outside of reactions, and I can very rarely watch shows because I'm eventually going to react to everything. But I did start Vikings, uh... Just on my own, because I love Norse mythology. A lot of friends have been uh, recommending it to me and stuff like that. I'm about to finish season one, but it's so funny. They mention the thing. There's so many things they mention that relate to either, like, God of War, the uh, Vinland Saga, the Saturn Third. Like, I just love Norse mythology and its whole, you know. They just mention the thing, and they go to the thing in there, so. I do. If I could ship anyone as of right now, it would be Arnheid and Einar, so. Right? Even the smallest little wind would kick him down. <laughs> I love Thorfinn. He's like me. I would love to see that process. Also, another weird thing that has to do with just this. I don't know why I'm going on these side tangents. You guys ever seen those TikToks or reels of people who stick to like the traditional Chinese methods? Or it's the only one I see Chinese. That's why I mentioned that. Where they'll make like paper or bread, or whatever it will be. Like, they make whatever, it, how it is modern today, but they made it how they made it hundreds of years ago. And by golly, do I'm like, I'm flabbergasted by the amount of work that these people put in back in the day. It always baffles me. It might take a very long time, but I respect you seeing progress and, you know, moving towards the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm the same way, you know? I get depressed sometimes, but... We're making progress. Heck yeah. Look at... I was about to say, is that not Kettle? But no, it's not. That's Kettle on the left. Is this Kettle's oldest son? Okay. This is not what I was expecting at all. Thor Gil? People should stay where they belong, and everything's not for everyone, you know? That is very true. He's King Canute. Oh, yes, yes he has. Right? You're asking me to kill my son. At the thing. Snake's the one who trained him, it makes sense. Are these the thieves, maybe? Mm, they're kids. Oh, that makes me feel so much worse. He's just trying to steal for his sister, you know. He's not hes not lying about that. You can tell Kettle feels bad, but back in the day, they would have cut your hands off, no questions. I watched Vikings, too. Someone gets accused of the, uh, theft. He got, like, stoned in the square. You know, not to death, but still punished. Talk about a big brother. You can tell Omar wants to, but he's definitely not ready. He's deep down, like he said, a coward, you know? 
I do like the scars Thorgil has, though. His necklace. He's going to be some gangster jewelry. I was literally just about to say it's either going to be gangster jewelry or a necklace full of ears. I was thinking of The Walking Dead. No, that is human ears. You ever seen The Walking Dead? That's what Daryl does. It's not uncommon for people to want to take trophies, you know. Iron Fist Kettle. It's the name of this episode. It, has he never heard of his father's nickname? That's a gangster nickname. Iron Fist. That's a crazy nickname. And he's just sitting over there embarrassed. He's a farmer now. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's the question of the episode. What do we do about the thieves? I won't lie. Of all the men we've met, especially war veterans like Kettle, he seems very understanding. Probably the most understanding, one of the most understanding people we've met. Lighten the mood a little bit. I know his name was like Stuart, right? Yeah. Tora. Their mother and a baby. Damn. I wonder. Probably dead, sadly. Imagine your dad's just like, hey, I'll be back in a month, and he just never comes back. To How long after a month goes by before you accept it, you know? Oh, so they knew his dad's snory? You're going to hire him out? Oh. Bro, he's a great man. He's over here being brought to tears. Is that Kettle's wife? Oh, I had no idea. She was the one slapping our night. I had no idea. Gorgil did say, how's mom doing? But I was saying, they would have cut their hands off back in the day for nothing. Good big brother. It's very rough, but I probably would do that as Stuart. I probably would take my sister's punishment, you know. Yeah, that's what war does to someone. So cold. Well, has a necklace of ears, wants to cut off. Right? Kettle's, I honestly... One of the more nuanced characters. I'm, he's really growing on me. Shut up, Potter. And I think Potter, we've noticed, is very socially observant. He knows and sees a lot going on. And Kettle, obviously we can see he's a man who is a good-hearted person kind person but is not a fool to the things that go on he's not disillusioned to the reality he lives in he knows according to his hierarchy his rules the rules of the land he must punish them but he feels so bad he doesn't want to do it and if his, if his son Thorgil wasn't here he, he could get away with it you know uh, snake's cool potter's cool omar doesn't give a fuck but it's his son Thorgil. it's like damn bro a, a freshly veteraned war guy you know who's like yeah i get it we're gonna stuck between a rock and a hard place so shout out potter please he's more than happy he's like yes yes say your mind please and i feel like potter's doing this because of kettle he knows he'll work until he can pay off same situation as the other slaves I know I said it when Potter was helping us out, Aner and Thorfinn, but I fucked with them heavy. Very, very, very good man. I don't think Thorgil is going to like it. Damn. Maybe never mind of everything I just said. Kettle just doesn't want to beat kids. He's a good man. He's 
You know, that's going to hurt so bad. I get what they're saying. Stuart's going to take it like a man. But damn, is he going to get his ass whooped. 15 max. And yeah, you do not want to bite your tongue while you're doing this. Bite down hard, grab a cloth if you can, take it. He's gonna take his sisters too. Like I said, it's the cruel, harsh reality of this world, but I respect it. Hell no. That's what I'm saying. He'll beat the living hell out of this kid. Oh, he broke his arm, three ribs with that. Oh my god. That was one. He will kill that kid with 19 more. It's like, I just thought of two different things with that. You guys know I hate when I go on these rants, but I just can't not think of these things. I think... Of obviously I relate. I'm trying to think of who Ketchel is reminding me of, and he's very much reminding me of Thor's right now, which Thor's still Askeladd's right under him, but Thor still is my favorite character in all of Vinland Saga. It's just these hardened, brutal, vicious war veterans like Thor's and Kettle who have these nicknames. The fucking Yom's Thor Yom's troll Thor, and then you got fucking Iron Fist Kettle and we know specifically with Thor's, it was the birth of his daughter and everything that changed his mindset and made him afraid to die for the first time. But it's like, I wonder, I want Kettle's whole backstory now. Like, why is he afraid to die? What's going on with, you know, like, there's something about established, dominating military men that have these hearts of gold, especially when it comes to children. Like, I just took out Kettle in that situation and I put in the Thor's. Thor's is going to make the same face. He's going to want to. He's going to not want to beat on children. I understand it completely. But then it made me think of a second thing. It made me think of Pirates of the Caribbean for some reason. When uh, Will Turner is on Davy Jones' ship and he's about to get whipped for insubordination. And his dad, uh, who's also on the ship, is like, I'll whip him instead. Same thing with Kettle. He's like, he's technically doing it. And he's going against his inner heart doing it because he hates it. He doesn't want to do it. But he knows it's for the best of the situation because he's going to do it a lot less hard than Davy or Thorgill in this situation. So it's like the nuance and the depth right now is going pretty insane over some kids stealing flour that we've never met before. You know, like that was a whole like 10 minute scene. That was pretty insane. That's what people who say the, the writing in the show doesn't go crazy is, is lost. The shit goes insane. All of it. Damn. Is this Arnhide he's venting to? Arnhide is very important. She is very beautiful, though. This is a very, <laughs> very complicated situation, to say the least. Damn. I... Damn. Alright, on to the next episode. Episode 8. Mm. Thorfinn is dreaming. Who is he seeing in his dream? I'd assume it is himself. And... Is that Aner? He gets to see his perspective with uh, what the Vikings and the Norsemen... Oh, as himself walks in here. Oh, this is some fucking depth. Goes in there and probably handles business at Thorfinn, as Thorfinn would back in the day. That's deep. That's some, that's some deep dark shit right there. An Empty Man, episode 8. Wow. Ignorance is bliss. Damn. As we get the shot of the water clearing out, no more agitation. Is he telling Aner the story? Good. Like, Danish warmer. I feel like these guys are going to be the best friends. 
the way he's describing him, but he's also so much like <laughs> Orphan's second father. It's so, so interesting. I could talk about two hours about season one by itself. Such a complex relationship. You hated him so much, yet you were like crying when he died. Canute killed him instead. I feel you. Once you guys get to know each other fully, you guys are gonna be inseparable. True. I'm curious what it is. The words from his father? You have no enemies? Is it something with his father itself? Is it something even deeper? Much deeper than that. Become a true warrior. I think there's depth to that. A true warrior. What did Thor say? Like, true warrior doesn't need a sword? What drives you? Damn. That's a such a sad bar. Without my hate, I'm empty. That's like Sasuke, but realistic. So sad. To... <laughs> it's so sad to think there are people out in real life, this day and age, who are so sadly like this, you know? You know, nothing else but the battle, but the fight. That's what's gonna... <laughs> Alright, Mr. Spherical. We're at the beach. We're going fishing? At least two or three, four in there. Good timing. Hell yeah. Takes a certain technique, you know? Good point. I've only ever gone classic rod fishing. I would like to go spear fishing sometime, net fishing. Such a beautiful shot. A good point. Sverko was, was listening in earlier. I'll be very happy. Learn one thing at a time. Fill that emptiness. See, that's the typical villain saga humor. It's hilarious. For him, it was two daggers. You're a farmer now. Again, I don't like to go on my side tangents, but I'm trying to think. What show is it? Is it... I think it's Black Sails. Black Sails, which is about pirates, has some of the most amazing dialogue in any show i've ever seen i'm trying to think of one of the quotes it was like to escape the ocean you have to walk inland so far until someone mistakes your oar as a shovel or something like that and that's how you truly know you've escaped the sea or something it goes so in depth and it has to do with changing who you are as a person changing your ambitions your your goals your dreams your you know inner peace everything as you are and it has to do a lot with orphan right now as well you know like he, what that's all he knew to be was a warrior but even just looking at you right now you don't look like you know, no one would be able to guess you know i can agree wholeheartedly you would have not liked him worst case yeah i feel like i'm watching that progress 
Oh, as he sees Ascalad in the corner, and he's gone. There's just no way people don't like this season. Like, I feel like instead of watching, or instead of going to counseling or therapy, just watch this season. Oh no, this is typical of an... Their whole field got destroyed, or yeah. Those retainers, okay. I'm immediately going to Kettle. I don't like that. I'm, I'm, the, I'm of the belief snitches get stitches, but nah. I'm immediately going to Kettle asking permission to fight the retainers. That's what I'll do. Even though I'm not going to get it, I'm like, nah, son, no. Nah. That's not how this is going down. They dug up the roots. There's no framing this as accidental or, or ignorant. Not. Same thing I would be planning on doing. Handling it. Never seen Aner like this. I do agree Thorfinn should be more upset. But I don't know. You have to keep a cool, calm, collected, but... He, up until this point, he's been on the other end, so he doesn't know what this is like. Mm. Realistically, in the heat of the moment in this situation, the retainers did something horribly, but Thorfinn's done that, like he said, over a hundred times over, you know, so... Yeah, retainers one through seven. Now that's the real question right there. Very much facts. Hmm. Thorfinn's smart. Aenor is not looking to do that, though. The thing is, if this really went down, even 2v5, I don't think Aenor's the strongest fighter myself. He may be really strong physically, but Thorfinn could whip all these guys' ass easily. Like, if Aenor can get his hands around you, he's snapping your neck. No issues. But he's not like a, you know... He doesn't care. He's going for it. And he, that he got baited. Exactly what he wanted. He's gonna... Oh! Thorfinn? That was not what I was expecting at all. Even Aner's... Surprised. He literally knocked out his front four teeth. Oh my god, his jaw is so broken. So is his nose, so are his teeth. Okay, we're officially saying fuck the rules. Whose image is he seeing right there? Is that the lady from season one who took him in? It is. Thinking of her, he's thinking of Thor's. As he cuts back into falling down the ravine again. Oh no, this symbolism. Oh no. As it's closing in on him. Oh hell no. I wish I had unlimited time. I'll just watch the rest of the season right now. I really would, I swear to God. Well, those were some fantastic episodes. I was so happy with the progress we were making in terms of the wheat farm and the light at the end of the tunnel. I was so disappointed in terms of how this last episode ended. Uh, 
I'm very curious about Thorgil and how that's going to connect to Omar, Snake, Knut. Like, is Knut ever going to come here? Are we ever going to go to Knut? Is Knut going to see Thorfinn again? That's going to be quite the interesting uh, union, reunion, what should I say? <sighs> There's so many different moving aspects, whether it's Arnhide connect to Kettle, Kettle connected to Svergil, Svergil connected to Snake, Snake reconnecting to Thorfinn, Einar, and then, like, that's what I, uh, it's... And the thing I love about this story is that there's so many moving parts and there's so many moving aspects, motivations, everything. And it's all taking place on a single farm. Like in that aspect, it gives me like Walking Dead season two vibes. Walking Dead season two is my favorite season of The Walking Dead. Um, just because it all takes place on that farm. It's all so grandiose yet so small at the same time. So interpersonal, so much character development. Oh man, this is so good. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. If you are, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to check out that Patreon, early access, full link, all that jazz. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.